better than office work, Thackeray. Nicer to think this up, Sarge. I like fresh air. Where are we heading? Well, I thought the zoo. The zoo? Oh, lovely. Spot a pleasurable duty, you might say. Duty? Cry for help from a Mr. Abraham D. Bartlett, the zoo's governor. He wants police protection for Jumbo. There's been some near-public riots there recently. Well, two can't protect Jumbo. He weighs over five tons. No, 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 no. You got it wrong, Thackeray. Not two of us. Joe had asked for you. I've got the day off. In June 1865, the African elephant Jumbo was received in exchange for an Indian rhinoceros from the Jardin des Plantes, Paris. At this date, the infant Jumbo stood four feet high. In 1881, Jumbo developed dangerous tendencies and did a great deal of damage to the elephant house. The latest thing in London is the Jumbo craze. For everyone loves Jumbo and adores his ways. That elephant's a big swell, no one can gainsay. And a jolly shame it would be if he sent away. Was a shame, fist, fist, who's to play, fist, fist, and no wonder that poor Jumbo did resist, fist, fist, he said no, fist, fist, I won't go, fist, fist, and he was a proper member to resist, fist. I hope you enjoyed the zoological garden. You'll have to step lively this morning. There's a lot in to see you today. That's right. More supporters for the court. Yes, ma'am. There you go, ma'am. Right then, gentlemen, please. Uh, one at a time. There's plenty of room for everybody. Shuddermongers and a record crowd. They ain't taking the chances, but they don't want any mishaps. Leave it to me, sir. I can handle him. So I've noticed. Right, Arthur. Jarrett from Scotland Yard. Sorry, Governor, you're too late. What do you mean, man? He was all over two hours ago. All over? An accident? No, he's marked. He's back in his pen. Oh, pity. Ah, 
Lovely afternoon, sir. Quite, Constable, but we're not here to enjoy a walk in the zoo. Oh, something on your mind? Jumbo mania, Constable. You know damn well we're here because of that confounded elephant. We dig a pit outside his stable yard. Sink the trolley with the crate on it into the bottom of the pit. Knock out the two ends of the crate, then fill up the pit and the floor of the crate with earth. And then you just walk him through it every day till he gets quite used to it. Come Friday, once he's in it, we'll crate up the ends before he knows what's happening. Well, Scott, do you think it'll work? It's hard to say, sir. Jumbo's a wily cove. And he seems to know when we're trying to trick him. Yeah, I've been thinking about him and you, Scott. You two get on just fine, huh? We should. I've had the care of him for nearly 20 years. Sure, a Jumbo does just as you say. You say, go, he goes. Stop, he stops. Maybe you don't even have to speak the orders. What are you on about, Newman? Abraham D. Bartlett, I am here at the request of the British people to hand you this petition which has over a thousand signatures demanding that you immediately stop the sale of Jumbo to America. Madam, I really will not countenance any further disturbances. Jumbo belongs to the British people. You can't sell his birthright to the Americans. He's already ours, ma'am. The deal is quite legal. Jumbo has his friends, sir. Millions of British boys and girls of all ages. We will not let him go. What price did you put on him, Mr. Bartlett? It is not merely a question of money. Oh, but what was your price, sir? We've agreed £2,000. Then you can count me in for 2,000 guineas. Madam, the matter is closed. Believe me, it is really quite impossible for the zoo to keep him. We shall see, gentlemen. And as for you, you Judas, a fine way to return his trust and friendship, young man. The only beasts in the zoo are men. Oh, not more, Petitioner, surely. Really, gentlemen. Chief Inspector Jive from Scotland Yard, sir. Oh, thank heavens, Inspector. And this is Detective Constable Thackeray, Mr. Bartlett. A first-class man. You can depend on him totally. Well, I shall. Believe me, I need someone I can trust. Do sit down, gentlemen. Do you know I dare not walk out in the gardens alone for fear of being set on by some fanatic like that old lady? Give a beast a winsome name and the whole of Britain treat him as a family pet. And now what happens? The public shower abuse on me for selling him. It's damned unjust. Oh, my apologies, gentlemen. Mr. William Newman. Mr. Phineas Barnum's representative. Detective Constable. How do you do? Mr. Newman. Inspector. Mind you, I blame the newspapers. They work the public into a lava. The stuff they print is libelous. The Zoological Society is accused of cruelty to a dumb animal. And I personally am charged with disloyalty to the Crown. That is excessive. If that really were so, gentlemen, I am sure Her Majesty would have spoken to me on the matter. I know her. Personally. Do you by Joe? Thirty years ago, I was the royal taxidermist. All the pets of the royal household were sent to me to be stuffed and mounted. I only wish I could tell Her Majesty the truth about Jumbo. And what is the truth, Mr. Bartlett? The animal is a danger to the public. Bull elephants of his age, gentlemen, are often subject to fits of musth. Lust? Musth. A condition peculiar to elephants and camels. It's a kind of frenzy associated with the baser instincts. The same thing. We are men of the world, Mr. Bartlett. My fear, indeed, my expectation, is that one day he'll have one of his fits walking in the grounds. Oh, glory. What an appalling prospect. Quite. Last month I took delivery of that. But nevertheless, you offered Jumbo to America. By the happiest chance, Mr. Phineas Barnum wanted to acquire the largest animal in captivity. Lucky for him. There was nothing underhand about it. Barnum knows all about Jumbo's fits of delinquency. He already has 20 elephants in his circus. I guess he can cope with one more. And he did offer 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds? For Jumbo as he stands. In other words, he undertakes to transport the beast to America at his own expense. And I'm here to supervise the arrangements. So, 
If you'll excuse me, gentlemen. Mm, of course. Good day to you. Good day. Good day. So, you accepted the offer? Of course. Without asking Jumbo. As the world now knows, Jumbo refuses to leave the zoo. Have you seen these? The press are behind Jumbo to a man. Oh, they better watch out then. Yes, this has touched the sympathy of the British public like nothing since the passing of Prince Albert. If anyone thinks I'm guilty of exaggeration, just come in here and take a look at this lot. All this has been sent in for Jumbo. Strike a light. More arrived by every post. Letters by the hundred. Fruit. Flowers. Twelve dozen oysters yesterday. I have nothing but contempt for people who profess sympathy for this animal and are totally ignorant of its feeding habits, wines and spirits, snuff, cigars. It's ridiculous. Then the director's high and low implored that elephant to go and show the box, but he said no, with me don't try soft soul. And Barnum's agent for him stood, but still a soft then angry mood. But I the one for wrong, no good, and if the scribe of all, I want to talk to you, fella. The name's Scott. And don't you forget it, Ellie from Bill. Phineas Barnum sent me over here to collect Jumbo, correct? Only Jumbo doesn't cooperate. Get him near the crate, and what happens, he stops. Go on. They tell me you make a pretty handsome profit in tips. The zoo makes no charge for elephant rides, but everyone drops a coin in the keeper's hand, and it better be silver, right? Perks. No army not. Sure, but if Jumbo goes to America, you stand to lose more than just a big, dumb friend. Is 10 pounds a week a fair estimate? I'll punch your head in, Yankee. Come on. You British have such elegant manners. Oh, now, come on, elbow her. Has anyone ever threatened you in person, sir? That's why you're here. I need protection. The women are the worse. Like that dear old lady you met. A fanatical rabble-rouser. We really must put a stop to this kind of interference. Would that be Mrs. Pennycook? Who the deuce are you? Sebastian Napier, of Napier, Napier and Knox of Manchester. My client, Mrs. Pennycook, has instructed me to make inquiries into the possibility of buying Jumbo back for the zoo. Excuse me. But didn't I see you here the other day? I don't think so, ma'am. Chief Inspector Jowett from Scotland Yard. Perhaps not. I'm getting more absent-minded by the day. I expect it's the excitement, but I think we're winning at last. The sooner this is all tidied up, the better things will be. Quite. Can't be soon enough for me. Chief Inspector. You guard the elephant. How wonderful to meet another devotee of the cause. I meet so many supporters, Inspector. From the humblest to even the Prime Minister. To say nothing of the royal family, the Queen herself. They all support the cause. The Queen, you say? Oh, and Prince Albert, of course. He was a staunch supporter. Well, he does so epitomize England. Really? I thought he was Prussian. Who? Albert. Oh, he was Prussian. I thought we were talking about Jumbo. Oh, the confounded elephant again. Good morning, sir. Having trouble? How splendid to see two such stalwarts supporting the cause. Here, gentlemen, is the thought for today. I wrote it last night. A prayer for Jumbo. Now, we must keep up the good work. Yeah. Well, 
You seem to be making a better impression than we did the other day, Inspector. What do you mean, man? Well, she's the old fanatic we saw leaving Bartlett's office. Oh, yes, quite, quite. The most interesting discussion. She's quite deranged, of course. Thinks the elephant's German. <laughs> Bobby, will you leave them things alone? Will you get off that? If the mistress finds you here, I'll get me notice. Do I have to get a stick to you? Oh, there you are, madam. Oh, you do look pooped. Let me take your basket. Yes, I am tired, Louise, if that is what you mean. But in a worthy cause. Another convert today. Chief Inspector Jowett of Scotland Yard behind me now. Do you know, I feel convinced that he is watching all the time. Oh, yes, madam, so do I. He is everywhere. I was referring to Jumbo. Oh, so was I, madam, so was I. Um, do you really intend to buy him? Mr Napier already has it in hand. What is this? Oh, it's some wine, madam. It's uh, French, I think. Someone left it in a box on the doorstep. It, it was addressed to you, but no message. How very odd. But how very kind of someone. Who could it be? An admirer? No. I'll have a little with my dinner. Uncork it now and let it breathe a little. Yes, madam. Oh, what a day. That morning, such a letter from old Barnum came, commencing with directors and concluding with his name. And within that letter did the showman vow that to the society he'd pay two thousand. <laughs> I feel quite exhilarated. This must be the wine. I shall sit here and think of a wonderful war cry for tomorrow. Bring my cocoa at midnight. Yes, madam. No journey for Jumbo. Hands off, Jumbo. There's no way to treat Jumbo. Jumbo. Who doesn't remember when doing the zoo? The gambles they It's already ours, man. The deal is quite legal. Your demonstrations may be well intended, but they're foolhardy, ill conceived, and frankly dangerous. The young ones unselfishly go in hearts with their thumbs and their oranges too. Save Jumbo! Whoever once thought in those moments of joy. Madam, Madam, will you wake up? I've brought your cocoa. Madam. Mr. Bartlett, may I ask you something, sir? Uh, yes, of course. What were the attendance figures last week after Jumbo got uh, star billing in the press? For the week? Yeah. Over 60,000, I believe. A little up in the average for this time of year? Yes. Oh, but... What was that? 
But I really don't see what How this much is... up on the average, Mr. Bartlett? Approximately ten times. So, while Barnum waits in America, the Zoological Society of London stacks up a fortune. Fortuitously, yes. Fortuitously. I don't think so. What do you mean? Keeper Scott controls that elephant. When mm -hmm. it refuses to enter the crate, it acts on his signals. I don't blame him. Scott makes a very good living out of Jumbo, and he isn't happy about giving it up. I don't accept that this is true for a moment. But I hope you're not implying that I would condone such conduct. Superintendent, conduct. I'm implying nothing. I just want to be allowed to do what Barnum sent me to do. Crate up the elephant and ship him back to the States. Well, if what you say is true, I'll have Scott removed from the elephant house and put you in sole control of the animal. I don't think that would work. No. But I have a proposal which might be the answer to all our problems. No. I'd like you to release Scott so that he can come to America with Jumbo. We'll pay, of course. My dear chap, you can have him for nothing. Scott suggested it weeks ago. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> Doctor! Give us it back, mister. That's an offensive weapon. Please, mister. What's your name then, son? I'm a Bobby, same as you. All right, Bobby. Where do you live, then? London. Ah, oh, Fitzroy Road, a couple of streets from here. Oh, that sounds a knobby street. Are you sure? My master housemaid. It belonged to Mrs Pennycook. Belonged to? Yeah, she's dead, isn't she? She was horribly murdered. And when I came in at midnight, sir, she was gone. You called the doctor straight away? Oh, yes, sir. He just lives up the street. Number 12. Bobby fetched him. It's just the two of us, you see, sir. Bobby and me. There's no husband. We're, we're better off without, I tell myself. Men are nothing but trouble, miss. What did the doctor say? Oh, heart. At first. Then he changed his mind after he looked at her eyes. I never seen Adam like them, sir. They were so small in the middle. Contracted pupils. This wine she had with her dinner. Where did it come from? Oh, it came in a box filled with straw, sir, and wrapped in brown paper. It was addressed to the mistress. Did you keep the paper it was wrapped in? Oh, oh no, sir. I lit the boiler with it. The box? Firewood, sir. The bottle? Dust cart. Must be a battle keeping this place tidy. Well, what with the mistress's banners and everything? Did you know she was partial to elephants? I had a suspicion. She was going to buy Jumbo back from that Yankee showman. Oh, she must have had the rhino then. The one? Oh, yes, sir. You see, her late husband was a mill owner up north. And he left everything to her, thousands seemingly. But seeing as how she wasn't used to, to, to dealing with the, um, the, the rhino, he set up a trust for her. You know, the mistress couldn't bear to see an elephant suffer. Not one of them ornaments is made out of ivory. Do you know that? No, but piano keys are. <laughs> it never crossed her mind. God, you're a fly one, Sergeant Cribb. Will you be coming back? Fill it up again. What's this, another one? It's not like you, Mr. Scott. You got something to celebrate? What's it? Jumbo's birthday. Why don't you bring him in? He could have had one on the house. What's his tibble, Mr. Scott? Creamed him in. Whiskey, if you want to know. Thank you. You know, when he first came over from France, he was a bag of bones then. I gave him whiskey to build him up. Honest, how did you give it to him? By the bottle? The bucket. You know, I think he's serious. Well, all I can say, it's a queer drink for an elephant. Ah, you never know what they're like. <laughs> Last week, an old woman came in with a basket of food. You know what Jumbo done? He tips up the food and eats the basket. <laughs> right. You won't let him go to America, will you? Of course, we're both going. You're going with him? Well, that's what I'm celebrating. Me and Jumbo are going to join the greatest show on earth. Congratulations, Mr. Scott. Have one on me. And a bass East India landlord. 
So, you're off to join Buffalo Bill, Mr. Scott. Yeah. When do you leave? Saturday on the Assyrian Monarch. With Jumbo aboard? Of course. Hey, how did he get his name? Oh, I don't know. It's uh, African, I think. Uh, Mumbo Jumbo, witchcraft or something. They certainly cast a spell on the British public. Yeah, they won't be able to stop him now. Just let them try. You sound confident. Could that be because you know something? What do you mean? Mrs. Pennycook. Did you know about her? I'm a police officer making inquiries into the death of Mrs. Augusta Pennycook. I wonder, could I have a word in your ear? Sorry to hear about the old lady. One of your real English eccentrics. So, did you know that she was planning to buy Jumbo back? Yeah, there was talk of it. Uh, did you discuss this with his keeper, Scott? Scott and I don't exactly have discussions. Oh, uh, does that mean that you two don't get along too famously, then? I didn't say that. We're more friendly now. Now what? Now that we have more in common. He's coming to America. Hey, When was this decided? Put it to him Friday evening. Oh, the day before Mrs. Pennycook was poisoned. Now, take it easy, officer. Now, I don't know what Sergeant Cribb will have to say about this. He may want to see you himself. He'd better do it soon. I'm leaving for America on Saturday with Jumbo and Scott. And that's final. <laughs> Between the decks I'll never stand, said Jumbo with a frown. And well, you know, when I say so, I can put my feet down. Upon my tail do not put so, with Yankee yarn, said he. No, I'll never bump or pack up his trunk to save one He's a dangerous beast, and nothing would induce me to alter my decision. But I must confess a feeling of shame. We're resorting to this. Trickery, you mean, sir? Unfair play at any rate, not cricket. Well, cricket's all right if you have the time, sir. Here they come. Stand back, please. Thank you. Right back, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Step right back. Step right back, please. Keep right back. And you over here. Right back. Right now. Come on, Jumbo. Come on, lad. Come here, come on. Come on, Jumbo. All right, come on. All right, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Clear pathway, please, ladies and gentlemen. Come on now. Clear out of the way, please. He gets used to it on Friday. We'll close the ends and catch him inside. That's what he gets for trusting his keeper. Okay, gentlemen. Keep back to me, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Keep off the pathway. I'm afraid Scott has used his influence over that animal to further his own interests. Reminds me of a certain wily old Scott in the royal household, sir. But that's in confidence, of course. Sarge, do I have to do this for another week? It's no job for a plain clothes officer. Sergeant. The danger of incidents at the zoo is even greater now that we appear to have got the better of Jumbo. I intend to ask Chief Inspector Jyatt for a man on duty day and night. Oh, blimey. No need to ask the Chief Inspector, sir. I'll arrange it. Never let anybody down, do I, Constable? Oh, never, Sarge. Right, you take tonight, then. I didn't think for a moment I'd see you back so soon, Sergeant Cribb. I mean, not that you're unwelcome, of course. Is it uh, business or something else? Business for the capital B, I'm afraid. I was hoping to see Mrs. Pennycook's legal advisor from Manchester. Oh, well, he's a capital B and no mistake. Always ordering me around and checking up on me work. Young Bobby told me he was here. Smart lad, your son. <laughs> Don't I know it. He's a sight too smart for me sometimes. You know, what he needs is a father. I mean, someone dignified and upright with a, a touch of authority. And a strong right arm. What will you two do for a home now that Mrs. Pennycook's dead? Oh, well, I'll have to find a new position. I'm making inquiries. Mr. Napier said he'd give me a character if I helped him to tidy up here. Then you'd better attend to it, Louise. The waste paper basket in the study needs emptying. Yes, sir. Can I be of assistance, Sergeant? I believe you can, sir. You were Mrs. Pennycook's solicitor? Her late husband's, actually. She's late herself now, sir. So she is. Yes. I was Pennycook's executor and trustee. He left his fortune to her. 
I would hardly describe it as a fortune, a few thousand. Sounds like a fortune to me, sir. Possibly. It diminished considerably in the last three years. She was a reckless spender. That's why her husband set up the trust, wasn't it, sir? With you in charge? Yes. She was full of madcap schemes, like purchasing that elephant for 2,000 guineas, donations to charities, annuities to zoos, and every other Tom, Dick, and Harry in the country. I came down from Manchester to make her see sense. Did you succeed, sir? <laughs> Sergeant, she didn't have 2,000 guineas. I would have had to sell this house and its contents to erase that amount of money. It would have left her destitute. But you went to see Mr. Bartlett at the zoo. Merely as a matter of courtesy. I thought that he was entitled to know that Mrs. Pennycook had no more chance of purchasing Jumbo than I have of marrying Lily Langtree. What's your game, my friend? Oh, it's you, Mr. Newman. What are you doing here at this hour, then? Taking no chances. Jumbo's last night in the zoo. I don't want some damn fool Englishman setting him free. Oh. Hey, the door's open. What? Oh, glory. What can I do? You can try whistling. Yeah. I tell you, Detective Thackeray's hair was standing an end. Good almighty, I just took him for one more walk round the gardens, that's all. Right in the middle of the night. I had things to explain to him. Damn you, Scott, if you never scare anyone. Just throw yourself to the lines. Scott comes round the corner with Jumbo. As casual as he was taking a job for a walk. I hope you gave him a roasting. Oh, I couldn't, Sarge. Well, I was so relieved. It was such an affecting sight. Well, it brought a lump to my throat and my eyes wouldn't stop watering. Jumbo as large as life and safe and sound. Well, let's drink to that. Yeah. Sergeant Crib, Constable Thackeray, on your feet. Oh, my act. Drinking on duty, this is deplorable. Are you totally unaware of police regulations? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Oh, well, it's a fair cop. You mean Regulation 38, Section 1, the principal duty of detectives is to ascertain the truth by a process no, of observation, it, inquiry that. and verification. Are you trying to persuade me that the process of ascertaining the truth is assisted by a bottle of wine? In this case, sir, yes. Infernal cheek. You've gone too far this time, Chris. Permit me to explain, sir. The late Mrs. Pennycook was poisoned by laudanum in wine. When you interrupted us, Detective Constable Thackeray and I were verifying whether it is possible to remove the cork from a bottle of wine, pour out some wine, replace it with poison, and then recork the bottle so that it wouldn't be noticed. Are you serious? Well, take a look, sir. With the cork back in the bottle, you can't see where the corkscrew went in. By Jove, you are serious. Another glass, if you please, landlord. Come sit down, sir. And how does this help us? It's a very good burgundy, sir. We know it was possible for the murderer to put the poison in the bottle. Now we need to know where the bottle came from. Unfortunately, the maid servant threw it away, burnt the box, the straw, and the brown paper it was wrapped in. Mutton-headed woman, depend upon it. If there's important evidence about the domestics, we'll destroy it. Don't suspect her anyway, sir. Nothing to gain from it. She's got to find a new situation now. Do you suspect anyone else? Several, sir. Two of them behind you. At the bar. Scott, the keeper, made up his mind to go to America, didn't want it ruined by Mrs. Pennycook. By buying Jumbo back from Barnum, you mean? He's a fly character, is Scott. Things are going just the way he wants. Plenty of sympathy and tips while Jumbo was refusing to leave the zoo, and then the offer of a very good job from Barnum to secure his cooperation. But you also suspect the American. Newman? Yes. There's a young man with the heavy responsibility. Just an elephant keeper in America until Barnum, the great showman, appoints him as his ambassador. Comes over to England to collect an elephant and everything goes wrong. Jumbo won't cooperate. Some old lady wants to buy him back. What's Barnum going to make of that? Newman would look ridiculous. So he murders Mrs. Pennycook to save his reputation. Looks like a self-important fellow, I must say. There's also Mr. Bartlett. 
proper superintendent you suspect him come now well you've seen him sir there's a man at the end of his tether doesn't want jumbo safe for the nation desperate to be rid of him at any price including murder if necessary the royal taxidermist a murderer takes a bit of swallowing it's only a suspicion sir don't have anything definite against any of them or anybody else and the boat leaves on saturday by joe yes there's no time to lose crib i want this case solved by tomorrow night well don't just sit there right sir good hunting hmm. Quite a pleasant little burgundy, I must say. That'll be three and six, Scott. In the next hour, Scott and I will put him in harness. Chains, you mean? Of course. Not in front of the public. Mr. Bartlett, I'm not that stupid. The elephant house will be closed to the public. I'm sorry. This whole thing has been quite a strain. Pickford's men are standing by. Once he's chained to the sides of the crate, we'll dig the earth out, hitch up the horses, Haul them all the way to St. Catherine's Dock. But what if Jumbo refuses to cooperate? I shall be carrying a gun. Great heavens, man, I don't want him shot. The British public wouldn't stand for it. With respect, anyway. Mr. Bartlett, he's not your property anymore, and the British public don't own him either. Struth. What was that? Him again? Right, Bartlett. I gave the little blighter the fright of his life. His feet won't touch the ground till he's home with the jaw locks. Uh -huh. What do you make of that, Thackeray? Oh, someone's had two goes of the corkscrew by the look of it. Two corkscrews, to be exact. Eh? The holes aren't the same. Give us it back, Mr. Cribb. You again? I'll pole at you. Not in the zoo, Thackeray. You're being watched. Bobby, come here. I won't hit him again, or you. Where'd you get it? Bottle. Wine bottle? The one that came from Mrs. Pennycook? Where'd you find it? In the kitchen? Did you see who left it? Give us it. And eat it. How about a pea shooter? Elephants. Oriental. Yeah, that's quite pretty. But worthless. Four other elephants carved and a baby elephant. Where in the world did she get all this junk? Oh, the mistress had a weakness, sir. For what? Ah, yes. Well, I suppose I might dispose of it as, as a collection. <laughs> if anyone else is eccentric enough to want to collect them, heaven knows we need to raise some money somewhere. The estate barely covers the funeral expenses. Oh, I don't understand that, sir. Well, she always acted like she was in funds. You know nothing. Well, she had some lovely jewellery and things, sir. I mean, she promised me her diamond and ruby ring. What exactly are you implying? Nothing, sir. What Mrs. Pennycook possessed or did not possess is not for her servant to speculate upon. Is that quite clear? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Have you obtained a new position yet? Yes. Well, not exactly, sir. You see, the lady said she'd take me, but only if I can give her a satisfactory character. A testimonial, do you mean? Yes, sir. But with the mistress gone... Well, you did promise the other day, promise? sir. Promise? I don't recall making any promises. I may have mentioned a possibility. But that is very far from a promise. Yes, sir. On the round table, a musical box in working order. Quite nice. I tell you, Sergeant, I know every French wine you can buy in London, and this ain't available. Chateau Grand Pierre. No. Could I get it out of town? I could look it up. Perhaps I should stock it. Must be a choice wine for you to go to so much trouble. I haven't sampled it. I believe it has a certain je ne sais quoi. This Mrs. Pennycook, bit of a nuisance, wasn't she? 
getting in Jumbo's way and shouting things. Didn't trouble me. Oh, I suppose not. She was on your side, really. Till you changed your mind about staying here. Manchester. They stock a lot of wines we don't. I reckon their taste is different up there. Where are you from? How about the Yankee? What did he think about the old lady? Ask him yourself. Eh? He's behind you. Do you know how much Mrs. Pennycook was worth? I don't like to think about such things. Didn't you talk about it? Her husband left her over 10,000. I looked up the will in Somerset House. She knew she had the money to buy Jumbo. It's none of my business. Mr. Napier said she was a reckless spender, is that right? I should have needed to be to get through that much in a little over three years. If you don't mind, I'm trying to work. Oh, so it's the cold shoulder for me. I can't talk about the mistress, really. Napier's orders? He's promised to write me character. You'll get your character, I promise you. Where's Napier now? Oh, he's gone round to the zoo to see the superintendent. Really? Would you care to come downstairs and uh, have a cup of tea? Or, or something stronger? Duty calls, I'm afraid, but I'll be back. I'll uh, bake some cakes. What's your fancy, Sergeant? Maids of honour, usually. In short, Mr. Bartlett, she left everything with the exception of a few small annuities to the zoo. With the instructions that it should be used to enhance the welfare of the animals. A laudable sentiment. This really is the most gratifying news, Mr. Napier, I must say. <laughs> I was under the impression that Mrs. Pennycook was somewhat at odds with the zoo's policy. But now it is clear that I was wrong. She cared very deeply about certain animals. Yes, I'm not unaware of her sympathies. Possibly you've heard that Mrs. Pennycook was a lady of some wealth. I was aware she wanted to buy Jumbo for 2,000 guineas. But you gave me to understand that her money is all tied up in investments. That's quite right. Unfortunately, they amount to rather less than I expected. I see. You see, there are certain accounts to be settled, expenses to be met. I would not want you to expect too much. Anything would be welcome. Then you better pass round the hat, sir. Mrs. Pennycook's estate won't even keep the monkeys in nuts. Isn't that a fact, Mr. Napier? Sergeant Cribb, what the devil? Speaking of the devil, ask Mr. Napier what possessed him to embezzle Mrs. Pennycook's inheritance. Ask him why he was disposing of shares in the Great Northern Railway at the rate of 60 a week for the last three years. It's all documented and it all belonged to Mrs. Pennycook. Ten thousand pounds worth altogether. That's why you won't get your new ape house, Mr. Bartlett. Napier speculated the lot. Is this true? Regrettably, yes. And when she wanted 2,000 for Jumbo, it put you in quite a spot, didn't it? I could have handled the Jumbo business. I knew from my talk with Mr. Bartlett that she had no chance of buying the elephant. All I needed was time to recoup the money. But you hadn't bargained for her death. I was bound to put your dealings under investigation. The irony is, Mr. Napier, Jumbo provided Mrs. Pennycook's murderer with a motive which you had already removed. Hadn't he, Louise? You poisoned her because you saw the annuity she'd promised you slipping away if she bought that elephant. What you didn't know was that there was no money left for elephants or annuities. I'd fetched and carried for that old fool for years. She promised to see me and Bobby all right. Then that damn elephant came along. I was only protecting what was rightfully mine. It isn't easy bringing up a boy in what she paid me. I'm sure it isn't. But the sale of her rings would have helped, wouldn't it? Clever touch using that last bottle of wine from the crate Mr. Napier sent her for Christmas. Could so easily have been traced back and incriminate him. Jumbo put you to a lot of trouble, Louise. Come along. You take him away For our sakes Flo Fanny and Belle And Maggie and Harry Fred, Ernest and George Who love dear old Jumbo so well Be kind to the darling And please let us know Every place where you take Jumbo to Safe to the zoo. They may 
boutique of stray dogs and buy a his box this final the clothes of song they may bid for obstruction and all Irish ruction to be sold at a price very low they may take a few wife beating fellows and send cattle tunnels and drift as to do for sake of the children, don't sell an old friend, he'll jumble the pen of the Strange, isn't it, Sarge, that a big dumb beast could have stirred such emotions and caused such tragedy? Let's hope we'll be happier at his new address than Louise will be at hers. Well, he's got to be the biggest motive for a crime we've ever come across. Just think yourself lucky we don't have to call him into the witness box. 